Yes, Dee, are we good to go? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, hi, good evening, everybody. And um, thank you very much for attending today's program for Foodpreneurs. Uh, to begin with, I'd um, briefly just like to know how many foodpreneurs we have today. So if you can raise your hands, but unfortunately I have to go into two screens. I'm a little overwhelmed with the attendance, I have to admit. So another big thank you. Uh, just show me a raise of hands so I can see one, two, three. Uh, Okay, I have some on the other page whose videos are not on, four, five. Okay, great. Because this, this program is really um, for y'all and anybody else who's interested in being a food pranya. Um, so can I just um, know from two, three of you um, what kind of business you are in? Uh, somebody, Atash Foods? Uh, sorry, yes, be possible to unmute or no? Yes, one sec. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, anybody uh, just tell me what Atish Foods? Yes, can you? Yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, 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 I can hear you. Okay, tell me. I just want to know what kind of uh, foods are they? Packaged foods, fresh foods? Well, my name is Dinsha Variava. Hi, Dinsha. I'm at Atash Foods is into processed foods. Okay. We were the, we were the first person, we were the first uh, company in Western India to introduce ginger and garlic paste mm -hmm. in 1993. Okay, okay. Thereafter, we went to uh, we, uh, we, thereafter we introduced red chili garlic and jeera green chili garlic and jeera which is of course a parsi masala yeah uh, english mustard and thereafter instant dansa instant curry and um, butter chicken yeah okay i now i recognize i've seen your packets at some of the shops uh, here in bombay yeah, yeah. Okay. And what else do you want to know? Uh, no, maybe I'll ask uh, Mr. Nanavati. Hi, so this is Mabrin here and uh, I have a small unit in Pune by the name of the Food Gallery. Mm -hmm. And what actually started off as a hobby for me turned out to be a, a, a bigger, uh, I mean, in business, uh, I mean, it turned out to be a biggest, bigger, bigger business venture for me. Uh, we've been uh, in this field for the last 10 years now and uh, we actually started off with just small catering orders and all and eventually we came up to a stage when we had uh, had to get our own premises for our kitchen which we we had I mean we, I had the financial backing so we purchased a place set up our own kitchen uh, we also do daily meals as what the you know the Parsis would call Dabba service Yes, uh, and uh, we are now also going into the frozen food section, oh, wow. where we are preparing, uh, you know, different kinds of frozen foods, something wow. like nuggets and cutlets and things like that. Great, great. Uh, Maruk, would you like to just briefly tell us? You need to unmute. Actually, <laughs> Please. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Maruk. Oh, which Maruk? There are two Maruks here. I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess. No, I meant uh, you, Maruk. But Nikhil, there are Pooch one and Joy. Why are there a lot of Hi. Uh, Bangalore. Okay, this is yeah. uh, Maruk Bilimoria from Bangalore. I am a caterer for Parsi cuisine and uh, also doing uh, non-Parsi cuisine uh, catering. I started last year only in the month of uh, September 2020 and forging ahead with my career, hoping that it would do well in the long run with your support. Great, definitely. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, yes, the time to mute again. <laughs> 
so what I'd like to start off with is uh, share with you the objectives of this program. Sorry, what I'd like to share with you are the objectives of this program and how we can uh, arrive at an understanding of uh, how to move ahead with this. So let me just share my screen with you. I have a couple of slides. Okay, so today's session is completely an exploratory one. We are trying to understand the issues faced by foodpreneurs, whether it is a home catering, whether it is something they are doing from a cloud kitchen. Um, and there are so many different issues. It could be a geographical location problem, a delivery network, pricing, etc. So this is not a series of lectures. They are more interactive sessions. So it's about helping each other to grow the business by networking and exchanging ideas. So what probably works, uh, you know, already worked for one could be the solution to somebody else's grief. And I think the market for Parsi food is large enough to avoid any conflict of competition. So we can safely share our ideas within our space. Uh, I strongly believe that networking is very important for entrepreneurs to develop their resources, their confidence, their motivation, procedures, strategies, etc. Um, why do I think this program will be helpful? Well, I'm drawing inspiration from a recently concluded uh, Parsi Food Bazaar that was hosted by the uh, Bangalore chapter of the WZCC. We had a week long um, virtual bazaar where uh, people could order food online, both fresh food and packaged food. And it was wonderful, wonderfully successful. But during this period, I, when I was talking to the food preneurs, I got to understand that many of them don't understand or have difficulty in understanding portioning, packaging, even buying, purchasing. A lot of them purchase in retail, so it affects profits. So that's what got me thinking and said that in some small way, if I can help those uh, who need it to, to grow their business and to increase their profit margins well, and, in, and also to make their work more meaningful and enjoyable, well, certainly there should be some kind of program that we should do. So I'm sure most of you are now wondering who is this Zareen and what does her resume say? So before I put on any resume, please let me lay my cards on the table and tell you that I have, do not have any degree in culinary arts or science. I actually stum really stumbled upon the food business. This, the word stumble is the right word. Uh, I had no plans whatsoever of either getting into the food business or opening a restaurant. I, um, had a very successful career with Citibank and GE. But then, you know, at some point, the corporate world becomes just too uh, difficult to manage with uh, a small child and a home to run. And so I decided to call it quits. Um, I opened a small internet cafe. And at, those were the days when very few people had computers at home. So I had these little uh, office space uh, in a very small, and then the people who came in for the day would started asking for snacks and tea and coffee, etc. And so I said, okay, so I used to whip up sandwiches and submarines, um, uh, my mother's mayonnaise recipe, tuna sandwiches. And soon it was not only the customers who were coming in, my neighbors started asking the neighbors from the next building and this just grew. So it became a little cafe. And added to that cafe menu came Margina Farcha. And I said, okay, this is a test. And in this, I'm talking about 20, a good 27, 28 years ago, 
when uh, very few people knew what Parsi cuisine was all about. So I was very, very hesitant to take a jump into Parsi cuisine. So I tried uh, one or two dishes. By then, you know, it was the, the computer business was sort of weaning out. So I thought, okay, let me run a restaurant. So I, uh, with a partner, and I opened a small 12-seater restaurant. I know there are people here who have been to that restaurant. It was in Richmond town in a tiny little place, uh, all squeezed in. Um, and it's, it's a, it was a very, very long journey because I had no kitchen set up. I used to cook everything at home and then bring it to the restaurant. Um, I worked some insane hours. I had, I, at one point, I actually lost the help I had and I would close the business at 11, come home and start cooking for the next day. And all of you who do Parsi cooking know how, many, how much taro we have to fry, how many tomatoes we have to cut. And I would cook till four in the morning and then I'd sleep from four to six. And then I'd get up at six and cook the rest. And I would then 10 o'clock put all the uh, vessels into the car boot and head off to the restaurant. If something finished, it finished. I, I, didn't, I didn't have the facility to cook anymore on the spot. And that's how I started my business. So I really learned on the job. I had, uh, of course, Bhikkhu Manikshah's book, Katie Dalal's book used to come to the rescue ever so often. I would tweak those recipes. Um, I have many from my mother. Uh, and I think I must owe her. She was always there, you know, whenever I was troubled and I'd call and she would find the solution to things. Um, so yes, this is truly um, learning on the job. So 17 years with Daddy's Delhi, we rechristened it Red Fork when my son, who now is a professional, who is a professional chef and uh, from a very well-established uh, institute called La Cordoble. And when he came uh, back from Australia to, he says he was feeling guilty that mommy was struggling all alone. So that is when the business just, you know, just went off on another tangent. So though we started, we introduced contemporary cuisine, we did not give up on Parsi food. Uh, we continued with it. That was part of our legacy. And, um, and I'm really happy that we did because I, the customer that walked in on day one in my little Richmond town uh, outlet was coming in on our last day as well. That was 17 years later to have the same dishes. So I think that was really a tribute to us. So I believe it's never too late to learn. I learned some wonderful things from my son and um, he still teaches me ever so often. And he taught me simple things like presentation. I could not dream of presenting Dhansak in a really attractive way. What is so attractive about Dhansak? But we still managed to put it together in a manner that appealed to the customer. So those were my little learnings. And I'm here because I wish that I had somebody to hold a program like this for me, where I could have exchanged ideas, where I could have learned. I would certainly have started making profits much, much earlier than I did. So that is my very brief resume. As you can see, um, my, I don't know how many of you really came to Daddy's Delhi or Red Fork, but those in Bangalore <laughs> certainly do remember it. And uh, yeah, I, we, we really worked the floor. We were there all the time. It was a family owned business. My uh, daughter-in-law joined us later. So complete family business. Um, yeah, I should not forget to say that the business grew from 12 seats to 72 by the time we closed. So that was really a leap. Um, so my last share is how I see the sessions ahead. And these are some of the, uh, the, the topics I would like to cover. Um, wherever possible, I would like to invite professional speakers. So 
um, okay, let's start with, is this, a, is this business a good idea to begin with? Uh, there are those who may think of getting into this business more so during these pandemic times when we're really tied up at home and a lot of people are getting into ordering food from outside because we're getting so tired of eating this, our own food. So is it a good idea and is there scope? Actually, we need to look at it in, for this, we need to look at where you are located, um, you know, geographically, how are you placed? What is the kind of, um, you know, do you have a market? Can you, can you push the business? Second, what are the legalities and formalities you will uh, need to start this business? There are some mandatory licenses that are required, so we can go through that. Um, how do we get these licenses? We can, can we get somebody to help us? Yes, certainly uh, we can. So that can be done. Then setting up your home kitchen. So it's not like I can start a catering business today from home with the, the setup I have. I have to plan ahead. Do I have the necessary equipment? You know, am I working on one gas cylinder? Won't I need two? What will happen if one goes? So this is as basic as that to, do I really need um, 80,000 or a lakh rupees, uh, an oven that costs 80,000 or a lakh of rupees? No, not necessary. So where do we draw the line? What is the kind of equipment? What is the kind of business I want to do? And for that, what equipment will I need? Then we can go through the economics of, the purchases, wastage, um, at least in a restaurant business and even, even in a food catering business. Um, the two things that eat into your profits are wastage and pilferage. Uh, in terms of pilferage, you can at least at home keep uh, an eye on that. You don't have that many staff, you know, but in a restaurant business, you have to be very, very careful because if you're ordering, 50 liters of oil, you will really not know where the one liter disappeared. So unless you keep an eagle eye out, it's really very difficult. Um, I remember we used to uh, every, choose, every Tuesday and Friday, we would uh, slice and fry 30 kilos of onions. Now I would, it would be very difficult without an eagle eye to figure out where the two kilos of onions disappeared. But to me, the cost, it's a loss. It's eating into my profit. It's the same thing with wastage. So if I'm cooking food for 80 people, when only 40 are going to appear, then I am throwing away good food because how many days am I going to keep it and freeze it and resell? No, you can't do that in a restaurant. No, at least not in, for quality food. Yes, you can freeze some things for a day for, for one meal and serve it at the next, but you certainly can't keep it for days and days. So how do we tackle this? How do we know how much I'm supposed to cook? Stocks in inventory, how much shall I buy? Do I need to keep 10 packets of uh, Atash Masala at home or are they readily available? We can ask, uh, uh, Mr. I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I don't remember your name, but uh, uh, then we move to food photography. Um, here, certainly we will need a professional. Very few people realize the importance of putting good food photographs on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, we fry um, a dish, we fry farchas and put them in a, um, a platter and take a photograph. We have not bothered to check whether the tablecloth below that is of a good quality, of a color, in which dish am I serving it? Um, is it showcased well? Are the farchas fried that beautiful golden brown you know, these are very, very important. And in food, the moment somebody sees a good food photograph, it immediately uh, makes them want to order it. So I'm not saying we, can, we cannot all afford a food, good food photographer. They come very expensive. So how can we learn to take good photographs so that we can do our own social media work? Packaging. 
how big a packet, which packet, enviro friendly packaging, um, how will the food stay? Will it take heat? We have to, all these things have to be taken into consideration. What is the cost of packaging? Delivery module. This, you know, we found in our last Parsi Bazaar that this was our biggest Achilles heel. Uh, it, we do have, we have, we have the Swiggies and we have the Zomatos, then we have the We Fast in Bombay, we have Dunzo in Bangalore, but these are all fairly expensive. How do we, in, do we include it into our costing? Do we set up a new delivery system that we can work on? We have to think this through. Payment options. Now we have so much available. It's not just about cash, though I'm very much aware that most home cooks want cash because it's a side business. It's not a main business. You don't want to get into taxes, but it still means you're restricting the customer. So how can we look at different payment options? Safety and health. You are in a food business. There is no, no place for error in terms of health and safety. Your food needs to be perfect when it reaches. So don't forget that when, by the time it leaves your place, it could probably be an hour in transit before it reaches the customer. You have to be very attentive to how that food will stay till it reaches that end. Uh, now in this current pandemic and the COVID, even safety, you have to be very careful. Keep these things in mind. Logos, branding, e-commerce marketing. Um, you know, I um, recently somebody sent me a logo for their food business, and it. Uh, and I asked them. I said, "What does this logo say about your business?" And the answer was, "It really looks very nice." I said, "But that's not what a logo is." supposed to be. The logo must speak about your business. So how do we get the right logo? How do we, from where do we get it? Do we spend on making it? Can we get it off some sites? Um, we can get somebody who is familiar with branding, logos, and marketing to have a session with us so that we can, we, see, I'm, I'm not saying we need to spend money. We need to learn how to do this ourselves. And of course, the last is ethics and transparency. Um, I'm talking to a lot of Parsis. I'm hoping we will not need to get into ethics and transparency at all, but we can briefly discuss where ethics and transparency come into this business. So this is where I complete the sharing of my information, but I'm going to stop the share now. And I would really like to hear from some of you what you think will be the value of this program, whether we should go ahead with it. Uh, I'm not worried about numbers. To me, that is not important. I don't mind five people, but if I can change one life in that five, I, I feel it will be successful. So we, um, I mean, we, anybody is welcome. You don't need to be in the food business to be part of this. But if we're going ahead with this, then we have to be committed to it because we will, I will need to work on it. I will, I will be inviting speakers and that is the problem where I don't have, you know, I have two people appear. So I just like to know, uh, Yes, if we can unmute, then I can, people can, and I'm sorry, I don't know if I will be able to see, but if you want to speak, you can just write in the chat, please. Anybody want to share? Uh, yes, yes, please go ahead. Atish Foods, yeah, yeah, you can go ahead, sir. I'm really sorry, uh, I didn't, I can't remember your name. 
Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes. Yeah, my name is Dinsha Varyava. Dinsha Varyava. Sorry, yes. Now, Zareen, most of the things what you spoke right now, I can throw some light on it. Okay. I was into packaging before I entered food business. Mm -hmm. So I have a fairly good knowledge about packaging. Plus what you said about the food photography. I have a good friend over here in my colony, Rustam Bagh. He's a food photographer. Okay. He's a Parsi and a very good one. And he's not very costly. He may be costly to others, but to Parsis is quite good. Okay. He understands everything. Then regarding the food, how you how you uh, show your food on the, the there are there are food style dish. Yes. You have to employ them, and they will set the food in such a manner which will look attractive. Correct. Packaging, in my opinion, takes a lot of money. The bulk of your your money goes into packaging. Because if you don't pack your food properly, then there are many, there are chances of spoilage. Then there are chances that, that people will not pick it up because it's not attractive. These are the things which goes into packaging. Right. Packaging means, like for example, I'll give you an example of my sauces which I've recently which I've introduced about two years back. Mm -hmm. I found that the original sauce, like, you know, we Parsi or our generation grew up on ketchup. There was nothing else available. So to make sauces like Shezwan sauce, pizza pasta sauce, and you know, and now recently I've come out with uh, barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. All these things requires a lot of R&D. R&D with, you only don't have to do your R&D, you have to catch hold of a person who is good at it, who, who can cook well, okay. who knows food business, and you have to have your food technologist who will tell you how to preserve food. That is the main thing. Now, R&D takes a lot of time because once you do your R&D, you have to keep it for some time to know whether your food is stable or not. Now, uh, I'm not talking about from the restaurant point of view. I'm saying that for a food processing, which I have been through, when you start your food processing, the first thing that you need is cleanliness in your factory. I have seen many factories which are dirty. In fact, those who come to my factory to see that, including the Taj chefs, they said it's very clean. And I have supplied Taj Flight Kitchen, mm -hmm. their gravy, I have supplied them 225 tons of their gravy in retortable pouches. Now, retort, most of you will not know. Retort means retort pouches. They are, specially, they are special pouches. Okay. Now, these pouches are readily available in India, but the raw material comes from uh, Germany or somewhere else. It's only pouching that is done over here. These pouches has the capacity to withstand a lot of heat. Now, what is, for those who would like to go into business with stable food, keep it... Uh, the shelf life of one year without refrigeration that is called retort it is something like an autoclave autoclave is used in canning where you can your products and you autoclave it this retort is a pouch where you fill the pouch it is hot filled you have to seal the pouch seal it properly and put it in your retort. I, my retort is a little small. So we have about 540 pouches or 545 pouches of 250 grams to 300 grams that goes inside. Each pouch, the, there, is a, there is a tray. On the tray, each pouch, we, uh, there are about eight pouches that fit in the tray. 
it depends upon the praise of of course and it depends upon the uh, retort how big it is once it is done you put it in the retort you lock the retort and then it is heated by steam now the steam heat the latent heat of steam is very high so the food boils at 100 and 100 degrees here it goes to 121 degrees under pressure under pressure means you have to release air also inside and air is released at the 15 psi pressure now all these things uh, are quite uh, technical which you will understand later on why yeah. sorry why oh, sorry why because once the heat is inside the retort the pouches with the heat tends to puff up and it bloats inside and it will it will get you know i mean it will burst inside in order to avoid that you will have to have a counter pressure of air which will keep the pouch stable and not allow it to blow too much you have, that is retort retort means you have to give intense heat at 121 degrees and for half an hour one hour depending upon the load once that is done then you have to cool it inside the retort where cold shower goes inside it cools the pouches till about 50 degrees 60 degrees and you remove them now it is shelf stable for one year why it is shelf stable because the pouches are filled and sealed then it is introduced in the retort with intense heat where all the bacteria dies inside and there is no other chance of bacteria falling because it's sealed this is retort this is my dhansa instant curry butter chicken and khima masala we have withdrawn you know jinga masala and uh, mutton masala from the market because the turnover was not good but for those who are into retort uh, into who wants to go into sauces so, i find yeah. that the giant sauces are much better the offtake of giant sauces are much better than the regular ones so anyway i'm counting on you to help us with uh, anybody who's interested in going into food packaging we will also have a segment of people who are dealing with your everyday uh, fresh food catering um uh, marbreen i will come to you but uh, maruk's already asked before you so i'll finish with uh, maruk yeah maruk go ahead yeah. uh the during the topics which you uh, just show to shared with us you know yeah. just now uh apa i would i would like to add one more to that sure. uh you know uh, which could be for the for the uh, uh fresh food segment especially yes. that uh i'm sure there are a lot of experts in in the field of catering the field of uh, cooking and uh, i consider myself a novice still i is just i have only had about 8 months experience in this field uh there there uh if you introduce something like you know uh, a cookery uh, class kind of for special okay. for special uh, dishes you know like yeah. if anyone would be interested for example maybe some kebabs or maybe uh, sali boti or dhansa or somebody wants to specialize on that particular dish and if they feel they need help on that you know so that also could probably be a part of the uh, good yes to we can actually uh, you know have some theory ones and some practical yes. ones and it would add a, a lot of excitement to the program yes because you no know, though the, uh, the we have a lot of recipes which are online but you know the nuances the in between yeah. the lines there will be something which we miss out as not like i do sometimes miss out you know? like my tip so, on the patrani machi exactly that. exactly and uh, <laughs> yes yes so you know these things if somebody could you know yeah. say i want help in this i want help in that so that probably could be a part of the absolutely i will segment. certainly add it yes. to the list certainly yes. and uh, i'll just be very quick on the second point uh, the delivery schedules which you mentioned uh, del the delivery patterns yes done so uh, swiggy and all are quite expensive uh, we do need to come out with some kind of a delivery module because if uh, one part of it is you know, as you say absorbing the cost in our dishes but that what happens is uh, the dish cost goes up yeah yeah and like some the delivery charges sometimes vary from 100 rupees and it goes up to sometimes 375 400 you know right. depends yeah. on white field or saljapur road Correct. so 
we need to build on something which is something. more cost effective for the customer and for us absolutely yes yes thank you thanks thanks maruk thank you yes mapri so uh, just to come back to a couple of points that you mentioned earlier one is regarding your food photography mm -hmm. now uh, in, in in the beginning we were associated with fasos which is a big chain of uh, restaurants all all across india and they basically went into from spring rolls they went into some kind of packaged meals and all so for a very long time they were associated with us and of course they wanted some kind of food photography done and they employed somebody on their behalf to you know to take uh, the food pictures for us and uh, of course they were expensive so we shared the cost and so sort of it was affordable but the later i realized that you know some of our cameras today existing on our phones can take much better quality yes. photographs yes. i mean if you really know how to operate that that small little device in your hand you can take some excellent shots i have been using my uh, i mean it's not some high fi phone but uh, you know you, you can take some excellent shots and uh, i do a lot of advertisement social by social media wise and it, it, they they really turn out well i uh, absolutely agree with you that's why i said as much as you can possibly do the reason i'm saying this you know uh, our business was a family run business we did every single thing in house uh we because we just could not afford i mean whether it was accounting or the marketing or anything we just learned everything and did it ourselves because we didn't have money to spend on anything so i absolutely that's why i would like to get somebody in who would teach us these little things that would make a difference to taking a good photograph and then coming to the plating part which is the most important part and how your food looks on a plate right. it's something that you can you know the the the, the internet is your source of inspiration i mean there are thousands of sites you can you know, actually just go to and check and you can you know plate your food on your own it's not so difficult we've learned it uh, in all these years uh what we missed out actually in this uh, in this entire thing is uh food costing which is the most important part you know that uh, everyone so needs to consider that's what i said economics uh, that's yeah. what i meant of course yeah. very big so, yeah so well, during the last 10 years i've worked with several chefs uh you know uh, you know trying to devise ways and methods of what we could deliver to the product to the customers and uh, most of these chefs had a, a, a statement saying that your food cost cannot be more than 30% of your selling price 33 it's a it's a standard rule across the yeah. world when you yeah. run a restaurant one third is your food cost one third are your other overheads and one third is your profit that's yeah. your standard uh you know yard stick and then yeah. you can play around of course each dish some dishes won't get you three times you have right. to do it only twice if something like fish is very expensive but sure. net net through your costing so that's another big thing that very few and it's so it's not just about costing it's the proportion for that's instance right. if i'm going to send my i know my dal costs me so much but i'm sending this bigger container 1 liter of dal then where is the costing you know it's and how many pieces of mutton your some there are people who are giving six and seven pieces for that cause you will never ever be able to cover so it's all very connected so big big topic for uh, discussion so uh, another two just two more points that i need to add sure. uh, for as far as uh, food entrepreneurs go i mean someone who wants to set up a commercial kitchen sort of thing a uh, parsi only parsi food will never sell i mean it will sell but it will not give you the right amount of profit that you need so you can have a parsi takeaway or a parsi outlet but you need to have uh, you know different uh, sort of uh, cuisines involved in it as well i mean we started out with only parsi and we saw that the the offtake was much much less and then of course we slowly went into continental and chinese and things like that and select dishes i'm not saying you you know go through a whole list of continental items but yeah i mean we we sort of uh, ventured out and we decided what was selling best something unique to ourselves that's what we gathered and you know that worked well with us right. so it's not only the parsi food so we have a lot of catholic clients now depend on our the, the christian type of vindalu i mean i, I mean the parsis make a vindalu in a very different way yeah. what they have it well, is in a different way so you know we have explored these options and you know sort of we've grown with them and we know what the customers want so it all depends on their backgrounds that we need to cater to 
uh, in fact there were several uh, several people who came to pune opened up restaurants only parsi restaurants uh, and uh, viraf and temas here on board will be able to tell you this and they put in a lot of investment you know uh, and eventually it did, didn't work out you know there are several reasons for this and uh, I, mean, i i mean i as a uh, you know fellow community members sort of told them look what you're doing is wrong i mean not everyone takes it in the right stride but i'm quite open when it came to that and i told them that you know you cannot serve only boneless chicken and boneless mutton yeah how would you like to chew on their bones yes. and to agree on that so it, it it doesn't work out you know they want to be more practical and they look on a hard khadda and they joy and things like that but it doesn't work parsi sometimes are going to use their fingers to pick up that boti and put it in their mouth so it, it has to work that way uh last thing that i want to point out is the delivery details i mean we were attached to swiggy and zomato and food panda for a very long time but they took away 20% of my 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 price like if i had something selling at 100 bucks uh they would take about 20 25 rupees away and we have a lot of uh, uh, you know delivery options in pune but you know sometimes i feel that having my own delivery boys is a little more affordable than going through these guys yeah that's why i think we need to really uh, think this because as i said even for our food bazaar it was and as maruk pointed out the range is huge so even if you want to build it into your costing it's very very difficult because you don't know whether that order is going that delivery is going to cost you 300 or 40 rupees or whatever is the what's the minimum must be 60 i think i'm talking about 2 years ago no no i i still do deliveries as low as 20 rupees depending on how far they are from my my kitchen but uh, what we have discovered works best is that we tell our customers and clients to order a day in advance so mm-hmm. we route it out that way and right. you know we, we charge a affordable delivery fee to that person so it's not exorbitant like if uh, i mean i'm staying in pune so if i have to do few deliveries in korega park on a certain day i mean one guy going and doing three or four deliveries that side is far more affordable for me as well as the clients you know to pay that kind of amount so swiggy and zomato is a total no no for me i i i mean i don't want to be on their platforms i've had bad bad experiences with food panda so i prefer to keep my own delivery boys great thank you mabri lots of input from you um so anybody else would like to uh there's nothing on the chat have i missed any hands up uh jangir sorry I can't see. Okay, Jangir. Yeah, sorry, got you. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Thank you, Asdeep. Hi. Um, I have just started a cloud kitchen. Actually, I am into the uh, health food business. My passion is fitness, and one of my gym partners is a restauranter. Okay. So just before the lockdown happened last year. uh he was telling me i i have certification in fitness and also he was telling me that so why don't we join together and start up a health food kind of a thing and then at that point of time we had an opportunity in starting up a kitchen in our gymnasium itself so we start up a kitchen just before the lockdown but as luck would have it uh, within about 25 days the lockdown happened and the gyms were shut down oh, so we had to <laughs> we had to close the kitchen so that's fine so then eventually the gyms in mumbai i'm from mumbai okay so the gyms uh, were they actually opened up after dashera almost yeah. after about 9 months or so and that's when my friend being into the restaurant business even the restaurants were closed till that time and he had about five six outlets of restaurants uh, in mumbai and he got busy with starting up his own kind of uh, six restaurants which had gone down and all so he told me that sir i really can't uh, support you 100% and all so what would you like to do would you like to carry on you can carry on yourself or we can shut it down having invested so much uh, i just ran it to about 20 25 days i thought it could be worth not right to just shut it down so i decided to keep it uh, on but when we started initially he had his experienced uh, chefs uh, not very experienced people who had learned on the job at his restaurant and placed them over there and all and now since he was not there i decided that i hire uh, professional chefs and uh, 
So I I advertised. I got two professional chefs on board who had about four to five years of experience in working in a, uh, a Delhi, and you know. So they came over, and then they set up the complete menu and everything. And uh, I started uh, again. I mean, I just started on the first of March this year, and then the lockdown happened on fifth of April in uh, Mumbai again. So gyms were shut down, and I'm I shut down at the moment. My question to uh, I mean uh, uh, to ask is that uh, I was always with this partner of mine. I was always under the impression that uh, to start up, I mean, it, it's very important to tie up with Swiggy and Zomato. Uh, to you know, have the orders uh, coming in and flowing in, and Mabrin just uh, mentioned that uh, Swiggy and Zomato is a complete no-no for him because obviously they eat into the margins, and I know because I just tied up with them, um, and their margins. I mean, overall, if you take up, it's almost about twenty-eight percent now. Yeah, I was going to say thirty. Yeah, I was going to say including the taxes and all, so it's almost thirty percent less. Yeah. So something which you actually want to sell at hundred rupees. It's to cover that thirty percent, you have to price it at one forty. Yes, Because so it yeah. is. Uh, but you see, it's um, two sides of the same coin. You've got this, but then they have a huge spread. I mean, if you're on Swiggy, the number of footfalls to their site, Swiggy or Zomato, is huge. So I don't know really. It's I think it's each one for themselves. If it works for you, fine. But um, You know, see what happens. Most restaurants get on to Swiggy and Zomato. It's an add-on. Okay, you're not. It's not all Swiggy and Zomato. A restaurant has only that. Just works for their delivery because it's very difficult to have your own and invest in your own vehicles and your own staff. So that's a good delivery module. But your main business is your restaurant. Now, some standalone as Marbreen would. He is. he's doing a delivery business so for him it's all delivery so he's got everything is going to them and it's huge and it's a monopoly and unless we can figure something else out then so it's really your call if you want to just let people know you exist maybe for a while that platform is good and then once you've built up a clientele you can so, maybe get off it don't I, let me i said that sorry I said once you've built your clientele, you can get off Swiggy. But do, I said don't tell them I said that. <laughs> yeah. No. So uh, my point is that as I said, I started uh, around the first of March this year when I restarted, mm-hmm. and uh, my kitchen being in the gymnasium, we had a live counter uh, catering to the uh, gym member. Now it that was never in. Uh, You know, all thing like it's it was not a full fledged restaurant because just the sales at the counter in the gym wouldn't uh, even break even the whole set up, yeah. kitchen yeah. staff, salaries, rents, and everything. So uh, we I tied up with Chili Zomato and all. So initially when we started, we got a decent uh, uh, feedback from the gym membership about the quality of the food, a couple of items which were fast moving and all. So and by the time I completed the formalities with Chili Zomato and all, it was almost past the month. So around the last week of March, I was ready with all the processes of Swiggy Zomato, and we went online around the end of March. But by fifth of April, the lockdown happened. So we were live, and so I still continued, assuming that now we are live on Swiggy and Zomato. So we'll get some because delivery is no permissible, uh, no permitted. So we said that we'll keep getting orders online. But obviously, being new online, the the orders were very very. less yeah so, it takes time to build yeah so uh, then after 15 days i decided that it would be better to shut down the kitchen and at least control on the rent and the salary part and then probably restart when the gym actually starts so that i know that at least there'll be some sales from the gym members who attend the gym so i still have an option of starting the kitchen right now but i really don't know uh, what kind of sales i can expect on swiggy and zomato in fact I was told by my Zomato manager that you'll have to really take some time off your feet, but you'll have to give some offers and things like that. Yes. You put up some discounted offers and things like that. But that still didn't actually work. So you give the discount, but they will not reduce their uh, yeah exact commission. So ridiculous. <laughs> that's, that's true. So uh, then I even just like Marvin mentioned, I employed somebody with a two wheeler to have our delivery thing and all. So being someone who is absolutely out of this field. Started up just being one month. 
I now know for a fact that the quality, at least, I mean, the, the one month trial that we did, we came to know that the quality of the food would appreciate it. There's certain items with the fast moving and all those things. <clears throat> My thing is like, I would like to learn from this, uh, you know, the meetings that we have, the sessions that we have now. So how can we increase the sales? And are there any, what kind of marketing we are looking at? I did some uh, bits and pieces in Instagram and Facebook thing. Okay, great. Done, so, yeah, yeah, we can get people to uh, who are, who do a lot of social media and who know because these days it's all about algorithms. It's not like uh, earlier it was where you put it on Facebook, everybody saw it. It's It doesn't work like that. So we can definitely invite people to give us a little more knowledge that what is the best way to market these small businesses through social media. So that definitely. Uh, thank you very much, Jangir. Um, there was, um, sorry. Um, Azdi, I'm sorry I lost, but there was Shiraz. Yeah, I think Shiraz put her hand up. Yes, okay. Shiraz, please. Hi, go ahead. Hi. hi. I just like to continue with what uh, Maruf mentioned because we are also like the uh, home cook. We have our own small kitchen here in Bombay. Okay. But what we would like to, as she mentioned, we would like someone who would us as to how we should first calculate the proportion, especially when the order is a larger one. And how do you do the costume? And all these uh, small little things which make a difference because sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, we, we cannot uh, yet gauge exactly how to do that. So if maybe we have sessions which could help us in that Absolutely. Case, it would help us also in our business. Certainly, we will certainly do that. If we can have more sessions. Because normally it's easy to calculate a small amount, but when it comes to a larger amount, we kind of get a little off the track. Yes, yes. It's always, it's the large, even cooking, you yeah. you know, you're doing every day, you're doing say 20 people and suddenly you have to do 40 and you think it is very easy. I'll just multiply everything by, yeah. but it doesn't work that way. So yeah. yes, you can. Sure. And that's why I think it's very important to get together to exchange this these kind of ideas because there will certainly be people who've done it, who can then share their experiences and then each of us will have to learn to adapt to our requirement. Yeah. So once we're together, it, it's always much better to work on it as a team. Uh, I think uh, Jasmine Wadia wanted some clarification for home bakers. Jasmine. Jasmine Wadia, yeah. Hi, Jasmine. Uh, so my, I work, uh, I help my daughter. She is a bakery chef. Okay. And uh, we take orders for the tea cakes and the cookies as and when the order comes. This is just by word by, of mouth and also on social media. We have been doing it since last four or five years. But uh, last Christmas, we thought we'll do it in a big way. So uh, we just, uh, you know, like uh, we star marketed uh, Christmas hampers. Christmas hampers, which had a Christmas cake and cookies and some uh, chocolates and all. But uh, we went overboard with the packaging. Okay. <laughs> we went overboard with the packaging. And uh, also, uh, as the orders started coming, we realized that we don't have any del delivery infrastructure. So it became, became so difficult afterwards. The only thing we gained out of this is the goodwill. Yeah. It was but a that's, big experience. Big Jasmine, that's very big. Goodwill yes. is huge. Yes, it was like, you know, like, a, like one month was like a, we were in the small house with a small oven. <laughs> the, we went overboard and but we would like to, you know, like she would like to go ahead with it. But uh, I, we really don't know if we get uh, some like-minded people to work. With. Yes, certainly. That's the whole purpose of we this. Like, to, like with the delivery you said, you, we did okay. ultimately be, the order started coming from the suburbs. Right. So we had to do we fast and then some people we had to tell them that it, the delivery is at cost. 
that's right um, the packaging and the christmas packagings which comes during christmas time is so beautiful you know yes. so you we you we just go and pick up for the hampers and then you realize you have not cost taken cost that in your cost yeah so uh, um, i'd like thing. to share with you all um something that we have been um mulling over in bangalore for the delivery um part of this business um we have a, a a member of our chapter who is big into cycling and he has an entire team of people in bangalore who are all cyclists and we seriously looking at how we can do these deliveries on cycle it's not about one person doing the you know the 20 km run it's more like a relay so if you plan your deliveries along the way it's somebody doing you know the first 10 km handing the parcel over you know then the next one so we're trying to i'm not saying that that's the perfect solution i'm just figuring out if we can involve one more of our members to look at something which is completely unheard of new and yet will help us with costing so it's just it's a, it's still a pilot not even a reached pilot project it's it's still on the books so we we are looking at different things and seeing if it will work yes mabreen back to you yeah so you know coming back to your to the deliveries part uh, what we have devised is we 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 have started off with uh, deliveries on a commission basis so i don't employ my guys uh, you know full time i i i give them assurances of a certain amount of deliveries per day and we charge we give them like you know for this area so and so amount for this area so and so amount and that works well with them so okay. if they take all the orders with them together you know it's like one long run but a lot of stops on the way right so you know that sort of helps them as far as the pricing or feasibility goes and it helps me because all my stuff goes out at one time and i know that it's not going to reach them half an hour 45 minutes etc so on so great so and what jahangir was saying about you know uh, how to increase sales i i i i have come across that uh, you know if you do pop ups which is a yeah. new sort of thing in 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 uh, pune it works really well so every two weeks i mean we do a pop up with our own uh, from our own kitchen and you know, it certainly helps you come try and come up with some unique dishes and you know right. try and make a certain menu sort of and it sells well i mean you don't have to charge per dish wise we we sell it per menu wise you know a veg and non veg uh, sort of alternate menu and that really helps especially during uh, you know festive occasions like now now rose and kordat sal or maybe even the easter time or christmas you know it all helps so you have these pop ups coming up they do really well it's a lot of hard work for one day but but it's it's good to say that you know you you are sort of uh, you feel nice at the end of the day that you made made some sale right so then are we in consensus that this this program can run and we can do more of them um you know then we can take topic by topic and um so in that for you know i'm i'm trying to figure out uh, maybe um percy would it be okay if we opened um, a whatsapp group for this or we can use the existing and add on people to that how will i be able to get in touch with all those who have attended today and who are interested still mute still mute no so i think the host will have to unmute yeah, oh, yeah. unmute yeah okay. no zarin let me tell you that the program is uh, very very good the 70 people i attended this program that itself shows the interest which people have in this food business and i have seen lot of uh, uh, you know people doing lot of innovative things in their businesses which they have done and i am sure that this networking will help everybody to realize what their faults are where they can improve where they can have good costing uh, and the most important thing which has come out of this is the delivery problem and i feel that each location like for example bangalore bombay pune should identify one parsi guy who can have a scooter or a small van or something like that 
which can be you know sp sponsored by everybody yes it's a sort of commission and he does the delivery for everybody you know uh, so that is something which you can think about i feel yes yes and i think definitely i have already put it on the chat that the program must continue it is very well received by everybody and i think lot of people will learn even a person like me who is not in food <laughs> It was very interesting to to know how the economics work, so I think it is very good idea. Let us continue with it, and let us give to our community the ideas to progress. You know that is the whole thing. Home business is a very important business for a small community like ours. So well done, and I think we should continue with this. So may I request everyone who would be interested in being part of the WhatsApp group. please put your name and your phone number in the chat box and i will create this group uh, for food preneurs and we will be able to take it from there um and i will uh, percy i'll i'll we'll talk on this a little more Jasmine I need your phone number also please And uh, I yes Viraf so i think that you should continue with this but you should have a separate group for it don't mix it with the existing okay. food and beverage group which may have some latent followers or you know people who are not actually in it make Fine. a separate group who are actually interested and carry on with it that's my yeah, yeah, yeah. so i will create from this from this chat um and again i have to say a big thank you i am truly overwhelmed uh i shall let you into a little secret i told both my sisters i said you are on standby if i only get two people i will need two more because two is really too little i knew shenas would certainly be there uh and of course yes my bangalore supporters um will be there but i said if suppose i don't get then to talk i must talk to somebody so i am i think they are relieved that they didn't have to come online so my sister just messaged me and she said 70 what's wrong with you and you thought you wouldn't get any so thank you very much i i am really truly um overwhelmed and i'm glad that uh, we thought of this program it's been on my mind for a long time and i'm sure we can help each other in a big big way so give me uh, a little time i will put some things together um i will form the whatsapp group uh and then maybe we can then you know meet again and go through um the sort of um uh program as to how we will you know whether we should have it once a week or twice a week we can decide that because it it needs to suit everyone i know we are currently at home most of us so it should work but give me a couple maybe a week to put all this together and uh, i will also talk to percy and see what how we should plan this ahead dina thank you <laughs> chenaz you wanted to say something so i'd like to take this opportunity to really thank all our seniors at the wzcc this program is continuing in the spirit of entrepreneurship and it has always been uh, we've never ever had to have anyone say no it cannot be done at the india region percy sir thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to put across my my dream is that all the food preneurs in bangalore who are in their home kitchens i want them to uh move or rather take their business further to a cloud kitchen now a cloud kitchen would mean they need to um uh, you know invest in a bigger kitchen space etc wzcc is the umbrella that gives you the opportunity to 
plan your business, write your business plans, and make your businesses, uh, you know, very successful. So be a part of the WZCC programs. Be a part of WZCC because that's where all the entrepreneurship learning and experiences begin. Um, thank you, Zareen, for putting in such a lovely program. I know we both were saying, Ke kaun ause, so ause, but I think you've done a tremendous <laughs> job. And talking about the, uh, talking about Cyrus, I mean, uh, Sheryar Unwala, he's a biker. So in the COVID, we have seen that he has managed to, with his bikers, take uh, packages to various, uh, you know, geographies of Bangalore. Also, when we did the uh, marketplace, Daina Barucha gave out hampers. Daina Barucha also gave out certain, you know, jams and other things people were buying, packaged foods. Uh, Sharia really helped us in cutting down the cost by taking it to various geographies. That's where it all started. And I think it's a very great idea. He can, as Percy sir rightly said, I'm very keen to start an SRS uh, delivery service. Then I'll meet in second for your service. <laughs> Yeah, I love you to that. Yeah, it's an idea that has come up, and I think it is fantastic if more people come in. What do you say, Percy, sir? Will WCC give yeah, yeah. it? Temasp, I think, also wants to say a few words. Yeah, Temasp. And I would like to thank uh, Aspi for putting in all our ads, our CEO, yeah. Temasp from Pune, and all the Bombay people. This is a truly a kind of a, a coming together of all the chapters to make businesses come true and dreams come true. Over to you, Temas. Yeah, so thank you. I won't take much of your time. I know it's dinner time for all of us now, <laughs> but I must really congratulate and thank Bangalore chapter for organizing a very informative topic. And Zarin, we should not under, underestimate yourself. I mean, the <laughs> number of participants itself speaks about volume about it. So it was a very informative session. And I think we must continue on this and develop further on this so that you know more and more people can take advantage of it. And more and more participants can, can be there. I would like here, I would also like to specially thank my participants from Pune chapter also. Yes. And especially Mabrin for his very interactive session. And he also gave quite a good input very to the person. Yes. So yeah. thank you once again and uh, have a wonderful night. Good night. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Zareen. Thank, thank you, you everybody. Good night. We, we shall meet time. again soon. Yes. Yes. Thank you, As Apna Yazri. Also, you never thank Yazri. <laughs> Yazri <laughs> thank is, is always, I mean, always by default. <laughs> you know, uh, we were talking to our food pranyas after the food pranya program, and we discussed how to take the business forward. We we're discussing various ways of, say, the in the pandemic, for example, Monday to Friday, I cook my own food. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I want something different. Can you, I said, I was talking to Maruk. I said, can you come up with something for the weekend? So, I said, you tasty, and it really lifts your spirits, you know, when you eat good food. So, the pandemic is giving us an opportunity yes. to really think different, do different, deconstruct the akuri, deconstruct your paludo. There's so many different ways of doing things. It's amazing. I think we'll really hit a jackpot if WZCC can really take the food runners to great heights. What do you say, Edel, sir? Yes, you are mute. Yeah, thank you, Shana Zareen. No, super, super input uh, and coordination by Zareen. Uh, lots of experience within the group. So I'm sure we can learn from each, each other and definitely continue the program. And I, I want to encourage uh, all the entrepreneurs to, to even, you know, to become successful. And this is a perfect platform to, uh, to do that. So I'm very, very encouraged and wish you all the best. And, and do try to make it global. I see a couple of questions of someone saying, can I join from Toronto? So yeah, try to make yeah, global. I also saw that. Yeah, we should. We should. So yeah, we yeah. try to fit the timing in so that it, it suits the global timing. Um, and we'll certainly, certainly get. And with WhatsApp, uh, it's like no borders, right? So we can right. And it'll be great to know what people are doing, you know, at the other end of the world, 
um, it'll be some, some really interesting uh, information. Great. Thanks for being here, Adil. No, my pleasure. Thanks. I think, Yasdi, we can finally close. <laughs>